Oh, hello. I'm Bradley Omar. I was just looking through these old-time science fiction novels and thinking, what a strange and distorted view of the future they depict. Jules Verne. Even our modern scientists who pride themselves on remarkable technological achievements like this one don't really know what the future will hold. Color television? My suit is vivid purple. My tie is kryptonite green. But can you see it? No, black and white, black and white, that's all we get. And where are the TV telephones they promised us? Why today, in 1957, we don't even have push-button phones. The future, a grim nightmare or a golden paradise? Does anyone know? Can we really know? Can the Earth's supply of food, water, even fresh air hold out? According to my calculations, Yes. But what will the future look like? Will it look like this? Don't get your hopes up. Tonight we present a view of the future as it really will be. Some call it science fiction. We call it science fact. You'll call it The Adventures of Micron and Antar. Stop in there, fill up, get something to eat. Good idea. Near as I can figure, we got about 55 light years to go if we stay on intergalactic 66. Well, let's just hope we don't run into any more asteroids. <laughs> hey, Mike, Yeah. You ever get tired of just kicking around the universe? Oh, sure. You know, maybe the next galaxy will get a good job and settle down. Oh, there's a time warp junction up ahead. We better pull over. Don't worry, I'm gearing down to some light speed right now. He's a mutant, poor fellow. Yeah, probably caught in that 1962 atomic war. Boy, it's some souped-up engine you got there. What do you got under the hood? Oh, just some special modifications. It's a nasty dent. You guys run into some trouble? Yeah. Asteroids. <laughs> a whole bunch of them. You guys are lucky to be alive. Hey, listen, you know a place around here where a fellow can get something to eat? Well, Xenon's is right over there. You get a pretty good space burger and a shake there. Mmm, space burger, shake. Mmm, Xenon's. Mm. When I give someone a ride halfway across the galaxy, I expect them to come across. Get your paws off me, you plutonium creep! Come on, baby, how about a smooch? Oh. Hey, hey, why don't you pick on some of your own size? Says who? Says me. Whoa! <laughs> Boy, what a... Well, I don't think you'll have to worry about that mutant anymore. Oh, you want me to wait in the rocket ship or what? Where are you going? Officer uh, Turner. Oh, that's right along the way. We can give you a lift. Along the way? We're going to the Crab Nebula. That's a thousand light years out of the way. Well, then maybe we'd better get moving. <laughs> Look, that's all the money I got, I tell you. You're lying. Come on, give me that money. Why don't you pick out some of your own size? <laughs> nice kick, Antar. Nice punch, Micron. Nice heads on both of you. <laughs> Boy, I hope you don't judge us all by the likes of him. It's guys like that who give us mutants a bad name. No sweat. Say, it's 5280.4. We better get gone to the Crab Nebula before the time warp's closed. Come on. Free beach ball. 
Whereabouts in Alpha Centauri do you live? Where did you boys say you were going? Crab Nebula. That's good enough for me. One of these men is Micron Zegrabar, man of the future. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Micron Zegrabar, the man of the future. Number two. My name is Micron Zegrabar, man of the future. Number three. My name is Micron Zegrabar, man of the future. Uh, uh. Tell the truth. Tomorrow night at 8.30 on SCTV. Throughout recorded history, a great man of genius and insight have shared one mystical truth that unified man's total spiritual awareness. What is that truth? It's the universal miracle of pyramid power. The ancient lines of the pyramid focus and concentrate those powerful rays into a miraculous healing and preserving force that can mummify dead animal tissue as it mummified the pharaohs of old. So stop wasting valuable time and money on dead-end spiritual pursuits. Listen to these testimonials on pyramid power. My cold sore went away. I thought my mother would call, and she did. I dreamed about fish and had fish for dinner. So send today, Pyramid Power, Great Pyramid, Giza, Egypt. Now available in groovy denim. How ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, starting to rain. Oh, well, let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you forgot your hat, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'm going to get drenched. You put the top up. SCTV now concludes its programming day. But first, words to live by with Dr. Bradley Omar, Universal Church of Science. Good evening. In the face of ever-increasing threats from our enemies abroad, where can we Americans look for the strength and courage to go on? Where can we look for the intelligence and know-how to oppose an enemy that has just now launched a Sputnik into space? Where can we look today? in 1957 to guarantee that we don't wake up one morning and find that all our street signs are printed in Mongolian. There's only one place to look. Look to the skies. For there in the skies, Americans will meet aliens, different in appearance from us, but similar in their desire for freedom from oppression. There will, of course, be some bad aliens. Some of them may even be mutants. They will have bombs more powerful than our A-bomb. But if we put our hope into research and development and our faith into a strong, offensive space arsenal, we may just have a chance. So watch the skies, my friends. Our way of life. Up next, City's got part two of Mordecai Richler's semi- Autobiographical story, James Woods and Alan Arkin star in Joshua, then and now, next on City's Great Movies. There. I don't see anything either. You're ridiculous. What's he talking about? That guy's a dumb asteroid. Yeah, he's nuts. Yeah. <laughs>